I'm on now. Okay, now that I'm on, good morning and uh, thanks for being with us today. We're dealing with Thyatira. It's the fourth of our churches in the uh, series on the seven churches of uh, Revelation, chapter two and chapter three, before we move on to the rest of Revelation. The uh, Church in Thyatira is um, non-existent at, at this at this point in history. Uh, the city was part of Asia Minor. It was the seat of one of the seven apocalyptic churches. Uh, it was situated in the uh, confines of two hills, and it is about forty miles uh, south and east of Pergamos. Um, it's one of the many Macedonian colonies established in Asia Minor in the uh, destruction of the Persian Empire by Alexander. Uh, the waters of Thyatira are said to be uh, adapted well to dyeing, not dyeing, but you know, dyeing cloth. Okay? Uh, and it's here where Paul, um, is dealing with uh, Lydia, a woman who owned a purple dyeing company, and uh, because of that, she was uh, from the guild quite wealthy. The principal deity of the city was Apollo. Uh, he was worshipped as the sun god under the surname of Terminus. He was no doubt introduced into the Macedonian colonists uh, and a priest by the name of Artemis is also uh, mentioned here in the inscription. A modern city of Akshare, uh, about uh, 85,000 people in population, marks the site of the ancient city uh, and is part of Anatolia, Turkey. Uh, like I said before I turned my mic on, nothing of the ancient city uh, can be seen. Remains of a Byzantine church um, is the only witness to the gospel in that area. Now, before we get started, on Thyatira, I've got something I wanted to pass out. Walt. Um, there is a... Huh. 
a guy by the name of Ben Shapiro who does a real good job. He works for the Daily Wire when he is dealing with um, abortion, transgender, uh, and, other, and LBGT stuff. But he is not a liker of Christ. Let's put it that way. Um, he has made comments uh, dispersing Christ. And um, as far as he's concerned, Christ is not the Messiah. The Messiah is not spiritual. The Messiah did not come to save from sin. And uh, Jesus was nothing but a common criminal. Well, this here paper that I'm passing out, there are 47 Old Testament verses that deal with the Messiahship. And each one of them has a corresponding New Testament verse pointing to Christ. Okay? Um, Zechariah, Daniel, Zephaniah, all point out that the Messiah is not a military leader. He is a spiritual leader. The Jews and Shapiro are looking for a, a military leader, one who will bring Israel back into its prominence. These scriptures, especially those three that I mentioned, those books, deal with Jesus, will deal with Messiah as a spiritual leader. And that's who Christ is. He's a spiritual, not a military leader. Christ is Messiah. It's the same word, different language. It has the same meaning. It means anointed. In Hebrew, it's Messiah. In Greek, it's Christ. And these verses all point to Jesus as Messiah. And so it kind of uh, puts a hole in Shapiro's argument that uh, Jesus can't be the Messiah um, because the Messiah doesn't die for anybody's sins, according to him. Well, according to Daniel and Zephaniah and Isaiah, the Messiah dies for sin and is accounted with, a, with the criminals. Because Israel rejects him as such. It's already been prophesied, uh, the rejection of Israel. And so, this is something that you're going to need as we go through the book of Revelation. Because we look at Jesus as Messiah. And how he fulfills the role of the Messiah. Okay? Um, would somebody please read that section on Thyatira? Oh, I can't even see my book here. It's verse 18 through to um, the end of the chapter. And so um, we've got 10, 12, 11 verses. If you would... Um, Robert, would you read the first 10 verses and let Sharon uh, the batteries went down on the portable mic. Well, Robert is going to read the first 10 verses uh, 18 no, he's going to read the first 5 verses, 18 to 23 and then Sharon will read 24 through uh, to the end of 29. They are quickly fixing the microphone. That mic doesn't have chargeable batteries in it, does it? Yeah. They got them in the wrong direction.
It is... The corrupt church. Is it working? Those of you who are watching us on our... Those of you who are watching on the YouTube, please bear with us. We aren't polished. We're a small church doing big work. That's why you got us. Oh, now they got to go turn it on at the at the at the uh, at the board. All right, there we go. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. No, no, not now. You to okay. the angel of the church in Tyatira. To the angel of the church in Tyatira. Right. This is the message from the Son of God, whose eyes blaze like fire, whose feet shine like polished brass. Mm. I know that you do. I know your love, your faithfulness, your service, and your patience. I know that you are doing more now than you did at first. But this is what I have against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a messenger of God. By her teaching, she misleads my servant into practicing sexual immorality and eating food that has been offered to the idols. I have given her time to repent of her sins, but she does not want to turn from her immorality. And so I will throw her on a bed where she and those who committed adultery with her will suffer terribly. I will do this now unless they repent of the wicked things they did with her. I will also kill her followers, and then all the churches will know that I am the one who knows everyone's thoughts and wishes. I will repay each one of you according to what he has done. But to you who do not hold her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you. Only hold on to what you have until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my father. I will also give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. All right, God of glory, we thank you for our time together. And we ask that you bless our study as we look at this corrupt church, realizing that these churches point out the sins of the church as a whole today. For in many of our congregations, you can find these same things taking place. And when I say our congregations, I mean Christian congregations, not one specific group or another. And um, we ask that you sanctify us in your word because your word is truth. And we ask this all in Christ's name. Amen. Now, the letter again is being addressed to the pastor of the church at Thyatira. And the church... The church has some good things going for it, but it also has an extremely large problem. Now, how is Christ addressed here? The first thing he's what? All right, first he is addressed as the Son of God. Christ is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And nothing that was created was created without Him. Christ is the Logos, the, the Word. When God is being active and God is speaking, it is the Word who is doing the action. He is 
recognized by Scripture as the Son, but He is not subservient to the Father. He is equal to the Father in all things. There's only one God. That God reveals Himself in three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ is eternal, without beginning and without end. And he's recognized as the Son of God. How else is he recognized? Okay. His eyes are a blazing fire. Okay, the fire is indicative of its piercing nature. Christ looks right into the soul. The world sees us outwardly. In James, James says that he will show his faith by his works. Only God can look into the heart of man. No one else can. And God sees our faith. But the world that we live in can only know that we belong to God by our actions. Faith produces works. Faith exhibits the love of God, the grace of God, the willingness to be forgiven as we have been forgiven. And so his eyes are piercing into the very soul of man. He sees what the world cannot. Goes on to say that the world will know that we are his disciples by the way we love one another, by our actions. And so he is the one that can look inside us and see the truth of our faith. His eyes being like flames of fire, are piercing. Fire is equated with judgment. Christ is the judge. Who else is the judge? Uh, you'll find it in 1 Corinthians, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. I want you to read the book and find it. You are. Paul says, don't you know that we will judge angels and we will judge the world? The Christian also judges with Christ. And I know that that's a difficult one to deal with uh, because you've been taught forever, thou shalt not judge least ye be judged, okay? That's not what the Scripture is saying. Um, Christians do judge with Christ. The world, those in it, even the angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and so that's true. Um, Maybe not. In the, in the final judgment, um, we judge along with Christ. And, um, but here, we are, we are, we are to judge. Um, we cannot present the gospel of salvation without first applying the law. When the law is applied, you're doing what? You're judging, okay? And, and so this idea of, well, you can't judge me, at least you're going to be judged, it, it, that's not what it's talking about. It's not talking about us calling sin into question. It's not talking uh, about us pointing out sin to the sinner. Um, I've got another piece of paper at home. I should have brought it. 
Um, there are 15 scriptures that I uh, picked out that um, basically um, talks about the judgment and God's attitude towards the sinner. You know what God's attitude towards the sinner is? He hates the sinner. Now, I know you've all heard God hates sin but loves the sinner. Okay? That's a nice bumper sticker, but it's not scriptural. Scriptural, uh, actually, um, what does it say in the New Testament about Esau, Isaac and Esau? Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. Isaac's the daddy. Okay? Um, Jacob, I have what? Loved, but Esau, I what? Hate. Okay? Uh, and, and so God can hate. Now, his hate is different from ours. It's a pure hate. Uh, and, and so it is different from the way a, a, a sinful person would hate. Uh, Adhor uh, means to hate. And uh, there are so many scriptures where it says that God abhors the sinner. And so you throw out that, cru that cliche. Um, God loves the sinner, though, as well. And see, there, there's where the, the problem comes in, um, in God's judgment. How can God hate the sinner and love the sinner at the same time? He hates the action of the sinner. But in his justice, in his love, he expresses that in the forgiveness he offers the sinner. The sinner has an opportunity to repent before Christ comes to judge. He can turn away from his sin and receive God's grace. But when Christ comes again, Christ is coming to judge the living and the dead. And his very nature as judge is to divide the believer from the unbeliever. And the sin doesn't go to hell. Who goes to hell? The sinner does. The sinner does. And so Christ comes. He comes as the Son of God. He can see into the soul. He comes in his next coming, in the second coming, as judge. And how is his feet described? Yeah, his feet are described as fine bronze. Okay. Burnished. They're polished up really good. They have been refined in the fire. Okay, the metal of this, the bronze, depicts steadfastness. I have uh, two bronze pieces that were created at Gorham's pre-war. One of them is um, a small greyhound. You know what it was called? A widget. Whippet. Whippet. Okay? It was made for the Whippet Car Company. And it looks exactly the same today as it did when my grandfather took it out of the mold and cleaned it up. Actually, yeah, but not that one. That one didn't. Those were in a plate, and they were made for the Whippet Company. Okay, um, you know where you know Whippet is still around. Did you know that? Yeah, but it doesn't go by the name Whippet. It doesn't go by the name Greyhound either. Chrysler Dodge. Whippet 
started making Jeeps for the war, and it got bought out, and um, it's the forerunner of the Jeep. But that bronze is perfect the way it is. It, it, it hasn't changed in over 100 years, or almost 100 years. Um, the second piece was done for the uh, 150th anniversary of the USS Constitution. Okay. It was the flagship of the American Navy. And um, they don't look any different than when they came out of the mold. Bronze is an enduring thing. It is steadfast. It is a metal that doesn't rust away. Now, I don't know its makeup, but copper and zinc, well, it is definitely long-lasting. Okay? Uh, well, it's bronze, not brass. <laughs> Robert! Is this going to be one of those days? <laughs> yeah. Um, only Robert would know which, what the elements of those things were. No, because he's got bullets. <laughs> and brass. And he probably has determined which one is the best to reload. Okay, so how does God commend the pastor here at the church? How does he commend the pastor? I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Okay. Um, they're under persecution. There is error being taught in the church. Heresy is being practiced by some, but I know that you are doing more today, Jesus says, than you did when you first began the church. So what are they doing more of? Love? They're showing more love than they normally did. They have brought the message of grace to God's people. And many of the Jews converted to being messianic in their Judaism. They put their hope in Christ. Their faith is stronger now than it was before. Their acts of service are deeper than when the church first was called into existence. They've persevered in the very midst of persecution by the Romans and the Jews. They have persevered. The gospel is still proclaimed. They have a work ethic. They have a work ethic. But there's a problem. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, you're not God. No, you're not, you know. We, uh, we follow Christ. We don't try to usurp Christ, his position, nor God's position, okay? They will know you are my disciples by the way you love one another. Is Robert a sinner? Oh, for sure you just said. Okay, do you hate Robert? Okay. Sometimes you do. Okay. All right, so... Um, our hate is different from God's. Yes. 
No. 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 We, okay, why? I cannot hate without anger, without retribution. I, I can't show love in my human nature, my sinful nature, to someone I hate. And, and God, and this is the confusing thing, God has many attributes, but every single one of them comes from the attribute of righteousness, purity, sinlessness. When I hate, I sin because I go over the line. God's hate is pure. And it brings his judgment. His judgment brings his wrath. His wrath, though, was transferred to Christ. Christ died for our sins. Christ demonstrated God's love for the sinner by dying for us. But that doesn't mean God does not hate what sinners are doing, that God does not hate sinners. Every time I sin, God hates what I'm doing. But I can... Yeah, but see that, okay, there's, all right, there's also a difference between you and the unbeliever, okay? There is a difference between us. And we fall under God's grace. We are forgiven. And we don't need to worry about God's hatred. But the unbeliever doesn't fall under that same grace. He is, or she have rejected that grace. And they fall under the wrath of God. And God, in his purity, and the purity of hate, he hates the sinner. His hatred does not constitute a sin. My hatred, in my sinful nature, does. There's the difference. Can you hate without a desire for revenge? Uh, without a desire, I wish that person was dead. Okay, see, okay. And God, his, his is, I wish that person would believe and be alive. And so there's a difference in, in how we work and how God works. Okay? I'm sorry? Yeah, thank goodness. And so we have to be careful. We, we have to be careful um, that we don't take Scripture for what Scripture says and exclude those verses that deal with the hatred of God towards the sinner. But we have to understand his hatred works different from ours. He's not sinning when he expressed hatred for the sinner. Yeah, but we are. Okay. Yeah. Yes. We pray for that person in the hopes that they'll turn away from their sin. But we also have to point their sin out to them. And, and that's difficult as well. Um, and, and so what God does, I'm not going to question. Can God hate? Yes. He's very specific. He hates Esau. And, and so how do you deal with that? There's a preponderance of Scripture that points out that God hates the sinner as well as the sin. But he also loves him or her and provides a salvation route for them. But what have they done with it? 
Do you know that most of those verses are directed at Jews? I wish I would have brought it with me. I, I thought I had, but I didn't. I'll bring it next week so you can have that as well. Um, uh, according to Paul in Corinthians, we will judge angels. It's all on that same page. I can't remember exactly. It's in 1 Corinthians uh, I can't remember exactly where, but um, well, but there is a judgment coming, and there are angels who will be judged. Uh, we will touch on the uh, angelic war uh, in, in a few in a, in a couple of months. Okay, and and uh, there is a war in heaven. Uh, Satan, who is Lucifer, is cast out with those that he was able to uh, convince to follow him. They, too, will be judged at the judgment. And I believe that's what Paul is talking about at that point. Um, what What did he have against these people? Jezebel. Okay. You tolerate that woman Jezebel. Now, she was the prophetess of Thyatira and enticed Christians in the church to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Here we've got uh, Balaamism and, um, and some other things all rolled up into one. Um, John may have called this woman Jezebel because of the similarity to Ahab's uh, adulterous and wicked queen, Jezebel, uh, who taught the doctrine that Christians should overcome their carnal desires by yielding to the lust of the flesh and uh, satisfying uh, their, their needs. And that they should join in all admonition of the heathen in order to pain, uh, to, to have influence over them. Now, uh, there are, um, I read four, I get some of them mixed up. I read uh, three commentaries, not four, uh, dealing with this. Uh, there are some that believe that she had the name Jezebel, but there are others that believe that John used this name that Jesus gave to him as a uh, sign that she was like the original Jezebel. Okay? Um, they didn't deal with her. There are others that believe that she may have been the pastor's wife. Uh, and therefore had influence in the congregation. We got to, um, <laughs> we, we got to um, Northern California, and the first thing they said to Dot was, oh, we're glad you're here. You're going to be the president of the Ladies' Guild. Ah, uh, no. And so, you know, and so, in other words, in that congregation, the wife had quite a bit of what? A power, yeah, influence. And the wife is not called. The pastor is called, not the wife. We were, we received a call to uh, St. Luke's, I don't even know if it exists anymore, in New Orleans. And the, what, they ask, you know, they interview you. They wanted to know if Dot played the organ. Because the pastor's wife was their organist. And the pastor was retiring and leaving, and so wasn't she. So they didn't just need a pastor, they needed a what? An organist as well. Well, we didn't go there because we got the word on that church. If they would have been around in the time of the writing of this, they'd have been on the list. 
They, they, yeah, they definitely would have been on the list. Um, they, they were, um, how would they be called? They'd be called the hateful church. Yeah, or yeah, they would be called the bigoted church. They had an elder that stood in the back of the church to make sure certain people didn't come into the worship service. In other words, people that were not what? They weren't good Aryans, okay? Good Aryans. And so they were there, and um, they were there at the back door to make sure that um, none of the Lutherans that were coming in that were black came into that church. There was a church down the road for them, okay? Um, No, uh, no, because I knew the guy that was there. He, he lasted a year, and um, he, uh, he warned me against it. And, uh, okay, uh, you do not change. Yeah, you do. It's almost impossible to change those hearts, okay? Um, it, it's... It, it, it's almost impossible. They, they didn't last. Um, they did not last. And, and so, um, right from the get-go, I felt no compulsion to go to that church at all. Um, I went to Temple, and that didn't last. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there, there were so many things, hardships for that church, uh, members there had uh, been around uh, the Lutheran Church and Temple forever. They were, some of them were confirmed in that church. They were charter members. And um, it went um, Seminex. And they had pulled out. And they had been a congregation for two years and they were looking for a pastor. And they brought me down from Fort Wayne, from Tacoma, where I went to school, and I became the pastor there. But everything we were doing there was directing us back to the church in Temple. Um, everything. Every time we tried to do something to move the church forward, other than put on people, there were roadblocks set up. Um, a guy, one of the members was going to donate land for the church and the parsonage. The uh, bank wouldn't let him cut it unless he paid the entire mortgage off. They wouldn't have let him separate out that piece of property. The contractor that was going to build all of this got a contract. He moved his entire construction company and he would be gone for a good year um, because they were building a, a, a big mall. Um, the, the congregation that was going to loan us the money to build, they had just got a big bequeathal, and they were friends with some of our people, uh, was not Missouri Senate. And when th their um, bishop heard, he told them that... Um, it would be frowned upon them giving us any money to build a church in that community because of, um, yeah, then, and then where we were, then the Baptist, Missionary Baptist Church, sold the church we were renting. And then we went, to the, the, the mortuary had this beautiful chapel, so we were renting that out. $25 a week. Um, he had places for Bible, everything. Somebody got mad and drove a car right through that beautiful chapel. And so we lost that. Uh, roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. Then, then they called a new pastor, and he came with the proviso that all officers in the congregation must go through confirmation 
all teachers in the school had to go through confirmation and they would teach Lutheran doctrine and Lutheran doctrine only in the school. And there were some other things. And one of them was that we merged the two churches back together again and I become the assistant pastor. And the president of the Texas district at the time uh, put a, a nix to that. Um, and, and so we joined the two churches back together again. One dissenting vote. And um, no, 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 no. We, we, no. we started with about 79 people and we had grown to almost 140 in that year. And so they got back a lot more than had left the church. And, and, but, but it worked out great for the church. And if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. Okay? It's, so it's really good. We don't have a mic, and so this is a lot of dead time. Okay, that yeah, that's that's another thing. Uh, we had a problem. Not it wasn't a problem. Um, back in the 40, 30s, 40s, 50s, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod was predominantly German. We did have the English district. And those were churches that spoke English, and they were all over the country. The English district isn't a state or a part of a state. It's a national um, synod. Uh, and so the church had to stop speaking German. I joined the Lutheran church in 19... 68. St. Paul's Providence had an English service and a German service. They still had German services uh, because of heart, the heart, H-E-A-R-T, heart. Okay? Not hot, heart. They, they worshiped in their heart language. And, you know, people say, well, why are the, Span the Mexicans and the Hispanics in California, they all speak English, why do they have to have Spanish services? Because of their heart language. That's the language they speak in their home. That's the language they've grown up with. And I, I am really, I, I, I really, um, I, I really feel that my grandmother and my father did us a disservice. When he went to first grade, she said, no more French in the house. You're going to have to speak English only at school, so that's what we're going to speak in the house. No more French. When she was with her sister, blah, 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 you know, uh, in, in French, but she wouldn't speak French to us because we didn't need it. You do need more than one language. My, my, both my daughter, the, the, the youngest isn't as, probably as, as good as the middle daughter, but she's, she was good enough, she's good enough in Spanish that she interpreted for uh, Concordia Irvine. They took trips to, to Mexico, and she was the one that led the trips for the college. And she spoke just in Spanish. And so it's good to have those things. So this woman, she's either a representative being called Jezebel because she's just like Ahab's wife, or she might be the pastor's wife, or she may actually have been named Jezebel. But we're not actually sure about that. But she was causing problems. Um, 
Pergamum is going through the same thing. Several of these churches are. They're facing the same heresies in each of these churches. Um, we face those same heresies today. We face the same heresies today. Not being taught, but being lived out. Okay? Uh, the founder of our synod, well, the original group, Stephen, had to leave the church because he was having affairs with women in the church. One, uh, one of my calls, I replaced a pastor who was having affairs with women in the church. Okay, we won't go how many. Um, so there are these things going on. Well, if it's okay for the pastor, it's what? It's okay for me. All right, and, and, and these are the problems. Uh, now, did, was she called by the church to be a prophetess? No, she was a, according to this, she was not called by the church. She was self-proclaimed. In other words, she decided that she was going to be a prophetess, and she set up shop. By her teaching, according to these verses, she mislaid the servants of Christ into sexual immorality, and eating food sacrificed to idols. The sins of Balaam that Balaam used to entice the children of Israel so that Balak could overcome them. Now, what, what, has, what has God done here? I have given her what? Time, verse 21. I've given her time. In other words, God is patient with her. But God's patience only lasts what? So long. I've given her time to repent. So God wants her to repent, to turn away from this sin and come back under his grace. Uh, El Papa is going to go to hell, probably. The, yeah, the, the same, yeah. Um, okay. Um, churches that are allowing uh, the alphabet to take over their ministries. I got in a real argument um, with um, a Bible pastor when, when they were doing the Okay, Thomas, the word um, at the college, that um, revival at the college. Uh, when I look at things, I examine who people are, where they come from, what, what groups they belong to. The young man that was doing most of the narrative there is part of the LBGT community at that, universe, at that college university. Um, nowhere in the scripture does it say we are to do exorcism. But when they start out, there's a woman on the stage performing an exorcism. Okay? Uh, that's not scriptural. The, uh, it supposedly was... Um, It just happened. It was impromptu. People just started coming. It had been talked about a couple months earlier by the guy that was the next speaker the next week at that university. At his church, they had talked about it. Okay, so that automatically says it's, it's not just, it just didn't happen. They had music almost 24 hours a day 
for the entire week. Where did those bands come from? All of this was staged. A revival is ended by God, not an entity. And so what did the university do? The university said, well, it's over. They cl the revival closed on Sunday so that that individual who was speaking on Monday could use the chapel. Okay, so it wasn't God-centered. It wasn't God-promoted. A lot of the music that was used was not God-centered music. A lot of these groups aren't teaching the gospel in their music. And, and so, Ashbury, it, it, I brought this out, and he was real angry. Look at all those young people who were praising God. What God were they praising? Okay, that's, see, that's, there's the problem. Um, who are these people praising at the church of Thyatira? Some of them are doing what? The work of the gospel. But others are caught up in this heresy. And they've turned their back on God. Now, what will be the outcome of these kinds of sin? Yeah, death. She is going to come under judgment. She's going to come under judgment. Now, according to verse 23, what will be the outcome of that sin? I'll strike her children. Okay, death is the outcome. Her children aren't her physical children. They are who? Her followers, those who follow her, are her children. John, when they would bring him out on, for Sunday services uh, at, on Patmos, They'd carry him out on a litter, and he would address the congregation, my little children. And so the congregation is his children. Well, her children are those that follow her. In verse 23b, then the churches will know, as she comes under judgment, they will know that I am the one who sees according to your deeds, and I will repay each of you accordingly. God's omissions. God knows what's going on. The world may not see what you're doing, but God does. And she and those who follow her are going to fall under his judgment. They're going to fall under his wrath, and they're going to face condemnation. So, what is this so-called depth of Satan? It's the opposite to the depths of God. All manner of blessings come from God. All manner of sin comes from who? From Satan. Well, there's the seven deadly sins. Pride, lust, greed, envy, sleuth, wrath, gluttony. This is the depth of Satan's secret. All manner of sin. So what does God promise to those who aren't involved? And we're going to have to quit here because um, I've got another 15 minutes. Okay, we're going to end with this question and, and um, I want you to research this week, okay? Question number nine. Research that. And um, we'll start with that next week. And um, any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's, that is the blessings that we have through the gospel in heaven. We brought that out last week, uh, Pergamus. Uh, let me get it. Ah, there's Pergamus. Yeah, when, um, I forgot that I already had it. Uh, okay, go back. 
Okay. I gotta find it. Uh, gotta get it. Hidden mana. Okay, to he who overcomes, I'll give the hidden mana. In contrast to the sacrificial food to idols, God gives the unspeakable joys of heaven hidden from us now, but which will be ours then. Uh, all of the blessings of the gospel are the hidden manna. Okay? Everything that we need in this life and in the life to come with God is covered under the hidden manna. Okay? It's all that God in contrast to Satan, provides for us. <coughs> Is that... Or, or, okay. Any other questions? God of grace, we thank you for the blessing of your word, for a glimpse at what is going on. And we can see that the teachings of Balaam and the uh, Nicolosians are quite prevalent throughout this region. It doesn't affect just one church, it affects many. And that's happening in our day today. With those who are promoting sin as proper in the church. And many of the churches are practicing Balaamism and the era of the Nicolosians. And it's happening not in our Lutheran church, the Missouri Synod, but it is happening in others, specifically the American, the Lutheran Church of America, and which is now part of uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And, and it's really funny because we've got people who grew up in that church and it is so foreign to them what is happening. And Lord, we pray that those in the church will wake up and cast it out. We pray this in Christ's name.